What's up guys, Chad with Character Club. Got a really cool van behind me. Uh, I did some of the build, I didn't do the full build on this one, uh, but it's super cool. My friend Hassan and Laura's van. And later on in the video, stick to the end because then you get a preview of the next build that's done that's right over here. So we'll give you a sneak peek of that at the end. Uh, so join me today on this video. We're gonna do a quick walk around of the outside like I did before on other, other builds and then we're gonna pop everything open and show you how cool this van is. So come check it out. All right, so first off, let's check out the outside of this van, uh, starting with what it is. It's a 2006 Ford E350, so it's got the V8, great shape. Obviously from the outside, it's, you can see that it's been painted. Uh, and this one, has the full Linex paint job on it. It's got this really cool, like green color with the uh, black, awesome paint job, super tough. You're not gonna scratch that thing up. Then going on to the front, we have front and rear bumpers and the rock sliders all done by Proline 4x4 here in Miami, Florida. Awesome guys, I'll, I'll have links to their site down below. Uh, we have a 12,000 pound winch, Baja L LP9, lights and then you have six rigid combination spot and spread over here you have your your uh, attachment points here for getting out of trouble upgraded headlights and that's pretty much here in the front moving on to the side we've got the the bfg ko2 tires on it uh, upgraded wheels and you can see these proline rock sliders are awesome with the e350 badging in here Moving on toward the back, custom bumper by Proline with a tire carrier. And we're gonna swing that out. We have the ARB uh, Tread Pro traction boards mounted to the back. So there's just enough room for that to fit. And then on the other side, perfect for one to two 20 pound propane tanks here, and then tools, storage, whatever else. And then you have your, your mur murder shovel <laughs> whatever this thing is called, uh, shovel with teeth, and an ax on the other side. This is a propane hookup here for hot water on the inside. Let's see, looking back, we have a couple rigid uh, reverse lights and more recovery points here. This one has a tow hitch and a backup camera. So pretty cool in the back. And then let's move around to the side. Looking over here, you have your water fill so this is your fresh water fill Hassan how big is the tank 40 gallons. 40 gallons of fresh water in this thing and then you have your shore power 30 amp hookup here so the Bundu Tech massive 270 degree awning this thing is a monster we're not gonna open it today but this thing is a beast and I don't think there's any other e350s with the Bundu Tech awning on it so if I'm wrong, put it in the comments below. Last but not least, you're gonna see this in a second. We have the Sportsmobile top, which was put in at the Texas Sportsmobile uh, facility about three years ago, two, three years ago. Oh, also forgot to mention, this is a true four-wheel drive. Uh, this is the Quigley four-wheel drive system. Lift kit, Fox shocks, high-low range, really awesome system. Uh, let's say you pull into camp and you want to get set up for the night and I want to show you how easy it is to set everything up and get ready for camp. Let's do it. You got two latches in the front. So we're going to undo these. And then one latch in the back. And then you have the grab handles here. And what I like to do is I just put my back right into the bed here and I just go straight up with the bed and everything. All right, let's move on to the back.
The bar is back, baby. I did like a makeover on this van. I didn't do a full build on it, uh, but I did touch a lot of the elements of it. And, and the biggest thing that I did, obviously, the drawer systems and all the door panels. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through each of the components, starting with this side door. I, I put this stuff in here so you get a visual of how much space you have inside. So great spot for your fluids, cleaning products, and then up here, paper towels fit perfect baby wipes, whatever you want to put in this section here. And then, so alternative, if you wanted to use this as like a prep table or quick, you know, make a coffee in the morning and you don't feel like setting up the whole main kitchen, fits perfectly with this little one burner stove. So uh, great utility. I wouldn't recommend putting like a 20 pound pot of pasta on here or cooking lobsters or things like that. That's what the other stove's for. But for light duty, uh, this, this little table fantastic closes right up marine marine slam latches so they're not going to open up on you uh, when you're driving down the road or when you slam the door shut then on the other side uh, again i i, I kind of took the design that was already there and actually i have to give full credit to our buddy mike uh, because the reason i did the bar in the other van build was because i saw the original design that he did here and I kind of put my own twist on it. So this is uh, another design, different from the last uh, bar I built, but you can see, again, uh, whatever you want to store in here, it's great for tall bottles, um, water, club soda, wine, adult beverages, and such. Uh, added a, a heavy duty aluminum grab handle here. So when you get in for the night and you want to close the door, it makes it a lot easier to close the door because you'll close this one first and then this'll, this'll be pulled in when you're inside. The original design of the interior of the van was a beige tan color. It, it looked good at first, but with tan, uh, it takes a beating pretty quickly. So that was one of the big things I did is I actually changed the entire color of all of the wood components of the van to black Raptor. I use Raptor on everything. It's a two part urethane paint system and Everything has about three coats of it on it. Super durable, waterproof. It's gonna last forever. And it's easy to touch up if somehow you scratch it. All right, moving on. All right, we're back inside. And one of the other upgrades I did to the van is I came up with a new bed system. So this is a two-part bed system to make it so we can convert it easy at camp. So that's it in five seconds now the bed's out of the way and you know you can fully stand up so i'm six two and there's got to be almost seven feet of, of height in here which is awesome so that's out of the way plus while you're at camp if you want to put your duffel bags or anything up on here during the daytime it's a great storage space speaking of the bed itself deploying it is just putting it back is just as fast right if you notice right here, so I added these, and what this does is when, when you're in bed mode, this actually locks the bed in place because the separation, you know, you don't want the bed shifting while you're sleeping. Maybe you're rolling around, and by putting these here, the bed can't move, so it's locked in place, so you're not going to fall, you're not going to fall through the, the bed in the middle of the night when you're rolling around. So easy system I came up with and again it just slides right back all right so the next this is probably the biggest thing that I did in this van so what I had to do is I actually had to mask and tape the entire van the inside of the van because I sprayed all of this to get this texture and to get the paint on I had to spray it if I rolled it it wouldn't look as good I took about a day and a half to tape out the whole van and I think I did a pretty good job. I got no overspray, so that was good. All right, moving on. These two spaces here go all the way to back to this section here. They were again, they were open. So what I did is I made I made a lip here, and now this is a closable storage space. Again, great for clothes, uh, blankets, big items, jackets, and then down here it's the same same exact drawer, 
um, made a smaller door. So again, you can, stuff that you're not using all the time, like jackets and things, they can get shoved down in there. So great space. You, you can access everything in the closed position. So if you're using this, this is a great one for shoes. This goes all the way back under the seat. And then on this side, uh, because these face the forward of the vehicle, and this is an off-road vehicle, if you slam on the brakes, I didn't want to have a risk of the drawers popping open or breaking anything. So these are on 250-pound lock-in, lock-out slides. So you have these big, deep drawers that won't open up on you when you're driving. So two of these, closed latch, you get the idea. All right, now let's get to the water system. Um, originally, the, van, the, the design of the van had a, it was a bookshelf type system here where it went here and then there was a microwave in this spot. So there was actually no running water inside the van. So in order to get water, you'd have to open the door, you attach a hose down here. This is for the, the shower. So you could have an outdoor shower here with, and it's tied into the propane hot water system. So this would give you your hot and hot and cold, you know, shower. But if you wanted to fill up your water bottle or wash dishes, you'd have to actually go to the back of the van, which we'll get to in a second. I removed the bookshelf, filled all this in, cleaned up the wood, and I, I, there's very little space to work with here because the water tank, it's a 40 gallon tank. It comes all, it comes literally all the way to here. So I couldn't go any wider this way. I couldn't come any wider this way. And I couldn't find a, a sink that was small enough. So I made one. This is a 10 inch salad bowl found on Amazon. And then I ended up getting this uh, basket system. And I've used this in other builds this is the Orlando basket system. All the links to these things will be down in the description. And then this is a typical water faucet. And the original design had the on off switch over in the corner because that's where your sink is in the back of the van. Makes sense. But now that there's water in the front, we need a way to turn the water pump on and off from up here. And again, the water pump, the water tank goes all along this space here. I really couldn't fish wires through so I, I found a wireless on off switch, which, which has a built in relay. So now we can actually turn on the water from the switch, which would just leave right here. So you're not going to lose it. So now you have running water inside. And then turn it off. I, I left the factory switch. So that way you can, if you, if you're paranoid, you can literally turn off that switch in the back and then the remote will not work. So it's like a fail safe. Moving on, underneath the sink, to tie it in, I, I went with the existing water line. I put a T and just ran it up and then added a residential ice maker water filtration system. So this thing's good for like 10,000 gallons. And, and that's it, wired it up and it's all plumbed in. Again, the marine slam latch, so it's not gonna open up on you. And then also underneath the sink, I thought it was a great space for maybe a sponge, maybe your toothbrush, your toothpaste, toiletries. Uh, otherwise, this would have been dead space. So now you can get to it. You can, if you need to service the faucet, you can get to it. It's, everything's accessible. Custom pull handle. And that is pretty much it here. Again, painted everything with Raptor liner. This, this was here, so I, I left that as is. Painted the whole thing. I didn't paint the inside of it. Uh, again, I even had to tape the inside of this so I didn't get overspray anywhere. <laughs> Over on this side, we have the Sirocco 2 fan. These are 12 volt fans, uh, probably designed for the marine boat industry and RVs. These things work great. They're bulletproof and you can change them and you can put it away and lock it, you know, when you get, when you, when you actually drive. So it works really good. All right, moving on to electric. So this is one of the other things that the main thing that I did in this build, I needed to, they're, they're having a couple electrical issues. So I kind of had to diagnose it and, well, let me show you here. Take this cushion out. And now we have this plexiglass access panel. So the original 
the original opening for the electronics was just enough to get to the fuse, but you couldn't get to any of this. So I enlarged the hole. I put in this uh, aluminum edging and then I got this, this plexiglass. So that way it's protected. It keeps, you know, stuff from falling in there, but you can easily just take these, these, uh, manual knobs, take it off, take the glass, service a fuse, put it back on. And the cool thing with the plexiglass is you can actually kind of look at your system and see what's going on. And then you'd actually know ahead of time what you're dealing with. Pretty simple, but effective. Okay, so this is a, you know, this obviously is in couch mode, so you can just chill here. The cool thing about this is you could actually sleep on this without deploying the bed. We're gonna do that in a second. But I wanted to make it so it was, all of your stuff is accessible. So by removing the cushion, you can actually flip this up out of the way. And this is the bed part. You could actually take this, put it into bed mode or take this completely out if you need to service the battery. So down here, we have two 100 amp hour rely on batteries. And with the massive, the, Magna sign, the Magnum charge controller inverter. So this thing is a beast. Now that's all accessible. So to go from couch mode to bed mode, super easy actually, you're gonna pull on the handle here and just slide this back until it stops. So now it stops. And then you're gonna take your cushion and now you have pretty much a full-size bed. Realistically, if you had to, two people could sleep down here. So if you're stealth camping, uh, maybe at a rest area and you didn't want to pop the top and there's two of you, there's enough room where you can make it happen. You know, you're going to be pretty tight and you can see for size wise, if I put my pillow here, I'm good. Good to go. Plenty of room. So in theory, you could sleep four people in this thing. In theory, <laughs> there's only two seat belts though, so the passengers uh, they're on their own. Then there's two lock, there's two pins, so when you slide this, it lines it up, and it kind of latches in. It's a pressure fit. Plenty of space here, and then here you have your on-off cutoff switch uh, for your system. There's also a cutoff switch for solar as well behind the uh, plexiglass panel. Uh, one of the other things I did was I swapped out the, the outlets. There's three outlets in total. One here, uh, one on the other side on the driver's side, and then one in the back. And I switched those over to black. And then inside, there, this is the on-off switch for the lighting system that's up in the ceiling. So you can see there's two lights. And these lights are really great at night, lights the whole thing up. And then down here is the, is the entryway light. And then this one's awesome also because you can change it to or like an orangey yellow color uh, for bugs and then also dim it. All right, now we're done on the inside. Let's head over to the back and show you the kitchen. Bottle opener, gotta have one of those. All right, back here, this is a kitchen. This is where the, the cooking camp magic happens. This awesome Dometic two burner stove. Uh, I designed this, obviously this is a, a lock in lock out slide system. And then there's a connection where for the propane, you'll just, te you'll just connect over here with a wire underneath. So that's a quick connection when you get to camp. Over here, we have a monster National Luna um, fridge freezer combo. It can act as freezer, fridge, or fridge, fridge, or freezer, freezer, whatever you want. And then over on this side, this is the, the slide out sink system. So collapsible sink, pretty easy. And then I wired it all up uh, for the water tank. So the, the, the hoses actually just slide in and out and they don't bind, which is great. So again, get to camp. You wanna wash dishes back here. This is where you're prepping food clean your food, cooking, very easy. This is the Camp Lux propane hot water system. Again, this is gonna to tie to your propane tanks that are back here. So if you want hot water, you can have hot water at the sink. You can have hot water over in the, in the front as well. And then moving over here, this would be like, I would consider your kitchen pantry where you could put pots and pans. Like right now, we just have the hoses in here, uh, some fuses and things but you can have all your pots and pans cutlery in this one. 
And then in this large drawer here, you can have all of your food. You can, it's big enough, you can put cereal boxes and all kinds of food in here. So it's a great pantry kitchen where you'd have all your clothes and daily items in the front, maybe some snacks, but then your main um, kitchen stuff is back here. And then this will open up and you can access your, the contents of the fridge. These fridges are fantastic. I've taken this van out with my family and we can load this thing up. I mean, it's really, really awesome. And then behind, behind the fridge is your little like spice rack storage. So you can actually, again, lock in, lock out slides. These are on 500 pound slides. So when this, when this gets in, it is locked in there. So it's not gonna open up on you going down the road. So just as fast to close it as it is to open it, close that down. Put, put the sink back, locks in, and then make sure your water pump is off. So same light as on the side. These are hardcore lights. And again, I'll have a link in the description below. Also dimmable and change colors. They look great at night. Over here, uh, custom panel. So I made these custom panels for these doors. So it gives that great look, it matches the van itself. And then over on this side, I change these outlets out. So this one has two USB-C and one USB port, and it's an on-off system, 12-volt cigarette plug, and then black 110 outlet. On this side is your kill switch for the water. So if I do this, water is completely off. And then under this panel, you can get to the water, you can service the water pump and see the, the back side of the water tank. And then over on this side, Another, no, wow, this is hot, oh my God. On this side is another access panel so you can get to the rear AC system. It has a factory rear air conditioning, so if you're driving down the road and you wanna cool the whole van, or you get to camp, you wanna leave it running, cool off the van, you can leave it running and it vents in. So it makes it really, really nice to keep it cool. This thing is for sale, so if you're interested in this van, uh, you can reach me on drawersystems.com. Uh, my email's on there. I'll actually have a link uh, below for, specifically for this van. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, next video is going to be their new Sprinter van, which is right behind us right now. So we're gonna turn the camera. Let me show you a quick sneak peek of this thing. Just finished that build. That's gonna be in one of the next videos. And then we're gonna keep rolling with these build videos. Thank you so much for watching. Check out drawersystems.com. I'm gonna have a bunch of photos of this thing on there. And if you're looking for a van build or custom drawer systems for your SUV or truck, hit me up, doing it full time now. Super excited about it. And check, check out the pictures on the website. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video.